Hello, my name is Nolan Butcher, and I am a software engineer with Almer Blank, which is located in Venice, California. I've been working with Flash for about seven years, out with Flash 5. Uh, today I'm going to go over some of the new features in Flash CS5 Professional. I'm going to go ahead and open up Flash CS5. And as you can see, the interface is very similar to Flash CS4. The first thing I'm going to cover are some of the new features of the ActionScript editor. They revamped the editor just to make coding a little more comfortable and robust. I'm going to create a new ActionScript 3 file. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to name this ActionScript example. And then I'll pop it into a source file where I've already created a simple custom class. So let's go ahead and place this inside the source folder. Open the options panel. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the full code introspection, which basically means that Flash will now read in your custom classes that you created. So I'm going to say import demo dot rmi dot example class and that is the custom class that I created earlier so now I can go ahead and initiate a example class object so I'm going to say var sample class data type it to example class and as you see we have full code introspection it shows up in our code hinting our code completion menu right there. So I can go ahead and hit enter. Equals new. And also when you actually initialize it with a new keyword, it will uh, uh, come up in the menu. Okay, so now let's say I want to go ahead and call a public method on that, on that object. I'm going to say example oops, class dot and as soon as I hit the dot, I get the code completion. So I'm going to start typing output, and there it is, output. And it will tell me what parameters that output method takes. So it's a string, so I'm going to say hello world. So now when I test the movie, I'm going to go ahead and save it. And when I test the movie, I should get a hello world trace. Okay, so I'm going to do one better. Not only do you get full code introspection, but Flash will now auto import your custom classes. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And instead of importing my class, I'm just going to immediately initialize a example class object. I'm going to say var sample class. I'm going to data type it to example class. As you see, it pulls up on the autocomplete menu. So as soon as I hit enter, boom, auto import. And now I can go ahead and finish my code here. Output. And of course, you get the hello world trace. Another addition worth mentioning is the code snippets panel. This will allow the designer to quickly add code to your project. So let's say you want to add a quick mouse event snippet. You can create a custom mouse event snippet, store it in your code snippets panel, and when you need to pull up a mouse event, you just add it via double click, and then you can edit it. So I've already created an FLA called TLF example. So what I want to do is show you an example of how we can wrap text around an object. So I've already created an FLA called TLF example. So what I want to do is show an example of how we can wrap text around, let's say, an image or a, uh, a vector object. I'm going to go to my timeline, and I've already created an actions layer and a text layer. On the actions layer, I've created a text string object that has some just some lorem ipsum text in it, for our example. And on the text layer, I'm going to go ahead and draw out a box. 
That could be a picture or a vector object, whatever you have. So now I'm going to go ahead and create our, our text field. Select the text tool, and as you can see in our properties panel, we have some new options. I can select between TLF text or classic text. Classic text will be the standard text as you're wor used to working with. The TLF text will be the text layout framework. And then we can select our options on whether we want it to be selectable or editable or read only. I'm going to select read only. We can also choose whether we want it to be horizontal or vertical. So I'm going to go with horizontal for this example. I'm going to leave it at Tahoma regular. I'm going to lower the font size down to about 12. And I want to align left. So I'm going to draw our first text field. So as you can see, we have two little boxes attached to our bounding lines on the text field we created. So to create our new text field that the text will wrap into, I'm going to go ahead and click on this little box right here. As you can see, our cursor changes to a little text field icon. So I'm going to place this icon where I want our text to continue from the last text field. I'm just going to click, and there's our new text field. So now I can go ahead and resize as needed for our layout. Okay, so that's our second text field. So I want to create one more for the bottom here. I want it to wrap to the beginning or the left edge of the stage. So again, I'm going to click on this little continuation box. Our icon is going to change when we move it. And I'm just going to click once to add another text field. I'm going to go ahead and resize and position our text field as needed. So that's about right, I think. I'm going to go ahead and resize this just a tad. One thing to consider on this when you lay when you do your layout is that you might have to reposition or resize your text fields a little bit because we might have some some text being cut off on the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and give our text field an instance name. To do this, I just select the first text field and then give it a an instance name. I'm going to say my text field, for example. You don't need to give any other text fields instance names. So now I'm going to go ahead and assign that text string to my text field. So I'm going to pull up the timeline, <clears throat> go into my actions layer. And I named that string text string. So I can go ahead and assign that to my text field dot text equals text string. I'm going to save. <clears throat> and then I'm going to hit control enter to test the movie. And as you can see, our text now wraps around our box as we laid it out. One thing to note is if you want to change the properties of the text in your text field, you only need to change the properties on the first panel or on the first text field of, this, of the set. So I'm going to change, let's say, our font size to 14. I'm going to save it and then hit Control Enter. And as you can see, the text properties changed on all the text fields and we have a nice wraparound effect. Obviously you can adjust the layout and the and the sizing and positioning of these text fields in order to give you a more fluid layout. 